What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Dr. Hamasteng and today I'm gonna to give you my first review here of the Magic Honor V3. So this phone I've actually been using for the past one week already and of course I do want to share with you guys some of my thoughts and my opinions on this and I like to break this down into four main segments over here just to give you guys a more comprehensive overview of this phone over here and how he has been performing for me for the past one week. So yes, without further ado, let's just get right into it. All right, so let's start off here with the price on this. So right now, from what I know, the price is gonna be at about the seven thousand ringgit dollar mark. So that would put it at about the thousand three, thousand four dollars. So that is of course definitely a very very premium price because I look at it comparing it to the Honor Magic V2. So it's gonna be similarly priced. And what I can say about this phone is that we have to talk about it as a normal phone and also as a foldable phone more importantly. Because I think this is two areas that Honor has done a really great job here, especially with the Honor Magic V3. And of course, the first thing that I wanna talk about here is of course the holding experience, which I think this is one of the major, major thing when it came to this phone. So when we talk about the holding experience, basically it's going to talk about the how the phone would feel in your hand and what I can say is that it feels really good. That's what she said. So what I mean by that is that it feels really comfortable in your hand. To be honest, holding this phone is like just holding a normal flagship phone in 2024. You of course have in terms of the width and in terms of the size of this, it feels very normal. So in case if you're using a normal so-called flagship phone in terms of the weight it is about the same in terms of the width of it as well it is about the same so definitely this is one thing they've done a really great job because when it comes to foldable phones most of the time you will get about 1.5 times the size of a normal phone because when you clamp both of the displays over there you will get a bulkier phone but it's not the case here with the Magic V3 and I think this is a really remarkable job. Again, like with Lasis V2, I really like it because it felt so comfortable. Here with the V3, they have made it a little bit more slimmer this year and it feels really good. But one thing I want to highlight over here is the fact that I have to use a phone case here right off the box. And what I mean by that is that because without a phone case, the phone would definitely feel very slippery. I know the protection here is really good when it comes to drop resistance in terms of scratch and all that but definitely I want to put a nice phone case over here with of course a very expensive phone so definitely with this texture here it does give you a little bit more grip and this is how I normally like to use the phone and one thing I really like about this is the fact that they've given us the ring here the ring stand to actually use it with this phone because again like I mentioned in my previous video you don't have to go out to Shopee or go out to AliExpress to buy a phone case you can get it right here right off the box which is something I really do like other than that when it comes to this phone in terms of the buttons it's really easy to reach especially because the side button here is your fingerprint unlock again it works really nice especially if you want to use it in the unfolded side of things over here it feels really nice very nicely balanced so if you're watching your shows on the go here lying down on your bed or whatsoever at multiple angles it feels really really nice and of course again you don't really feel that heaviness when you're holding this as well and if especially if you guys want to read all your notes or you want to read some articles on this you don't have to worry about the hand fatigue on this it just feels really nice and very comfortable and this is something i really like about the magic v3 because it's just so light and it feels really nice in hand other than that when we talk about the crease and all that yeah Yes, definitely it's going to be apparent because the way it folds is very very flat but of course it feels very nice and it does give you that kind of assurance that the magnets here and the mechanism over here will not kind of deteriorate over a long period of time because it's very nice and sturdy so you can definitely feel the weight when you're slowly opening up your phone and when it clamps down in as well it does have a nice magnet feel to it to make it more secure in the folded position over here and you know that it won't just simply open the display here which is something really nice and of course yeah just overall i would say that the holding experience as a photo phone is really good and i'm gonna give this a solid 
8.5 out of 10. Okay, so next up over here, let's talk about the viewing experience of this phone. So basically, it will cover the display, the speakers, and so the haptics on this. And when it comes to the display, I would say when it comes to the ultra display over here, it's definitely really, really good to watch your content. And what I like about this is that this phone here is a little bit longer compared to your normal average phone and it's also slimmer. So it would fit more of the content you're watching like your 16 by 9 stuff on your YouTube, on your Netflix, on your Amazon, Hulu or whatsoever. So that would definitely does make a lot of difference when you're watching your shows. And of course, you still do get a very guys very nice OLED display over here so you can enjoy your sharp colors, your good brightness when you're using it on your outdoor settings and just the display on the outside here is really good. And of course, when it comes to the unfolded large display over here, they are not messing around here as well. Again, it still follows in really, really nice. I do like the fact that we do have an LTPO panel. It, be, it would be really good if we had the same thing here on the outer display, but we still have it here on the major display over here. Of course, when you're watching content, this is more giving you more of a squarish design. So you don't really get to fully use the display settings over here because most of the time when you enlarge it, you'll get a three by four instead of a 16 by nine ratio. But what it does is that it feels just really nice. And in case you're worried about the bezels or some accidental touches when you're doing your gaming or whatsoever, you won't really get it with this phone. And talking about gaming here, what I like about this is that you can use it like more like a game pad like this to play certain games only. And I do hope that in future iterations, they will provide more app support for this. But overall, when it comes just to the display here, both the inside and outside works really, really nice. And I do like the fact that when you are just transitioning from the outer to inner and inner to outer display over here, you're not messing up a lot when it comes to watching content. Because last year with the V2, what I noticed is that sometimes when you're going on Facebook, and you transition them most of the time you have to close up the app and reopen it again here it doesn't really happen that often but i still do like it because they have optimized the software side of things over here of course when it comes to the speakers they do sound really nice very loud very crispy as you would expect from a premium phone and the haptics here as well works really really nice so with that being said i would say for the viewing experience on this i would give it a solid 8 out of 10. Okay, so next up over here is where it gets really, really interesting. And again, it's another section that they're focused in for the Magic V3. And of course, that is the user experience. So this will basically cover the hardware and of course the software side of things. When it comes to the software side of things, yes, we do have a lot of good stuff because it's powered by a very good hardware processor here. We have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 processor. We do have up to 51 hundreds of battery over here, which is of course enough to give you a full day of usage when it comes to this chunky phone over here. And of course, when it comes to the charging, it's still very, very fast. And what I like about this is that it does support your wireless charging to give you the full premium flagship experience over here. And when it comes to the software side of things, this is where it gets really interesting because I always like how the Honor UI works here. I like how it works in terms of the seamlessness when you're transitioning to your apps, multitasking as well. It works really, really fast with all my Magic 6 Pro, the 200 Pro and whatever. But what I like about this is that they've integrated their software to give you the foldable, experience over here. So you can use the foldable side of things here really, really nice and they've added a lot of AI features here. Some stuff like your AI transcribe, the face-to-face -face, uh, translation here as well. Works really nice because you can use it one for your window and also one to kind of like speak. So you can kind of show what is being said here and what is being transcribed over here for the person. So in case if you're going on to your holidays or whatsoever, you know, you can just say it over there and then the words do appear there. So not only sometimes they can hear the translation, they can even see the words there to make the so-called conversation easier to understand. And also when it comes to taking down notes, I am not a student or whatsoever. I don't go on to business meetings yet, but if you are into it, you can actually use the notes over here to transcribe the stuff here which is something really nice and they're able to kind of tell you which are the speaker A, B, C and all that. A really, really amazing feature. Of course, it's not fully polished over here yet, but the fact that they've actually introduced it over here 
and they have made a lot of uh, progress and advancement in this. This is something I really do enjoy. Of course, when we talk about the photo editing and the video editing over here, the AI features works really, really nice. And of course, just trans like I mentioned before, transitioning between the outer to inner and inner to outer display works very, very fluid over here. Of course, this is really something that you have to admire over here, especially if you're in a hurry, you just want to open up the display over here and just read your content or whatsoever. There's no lag, there's no stutters, there's no refreshes over here. It just works like one full display, which is something really cool. And yeah, so far I've been using it for the past week. I've been trying to open up as much as I can and it works really, really nice. So overall, in terms of the user experience video, I'll give it a solid 1.5 out of 10. Last but not least, let's talk about the cameras on this phone. So again, this is where they kind of, you know, just put it there because it's a flagship phone. So they have to give you a flagship set of cameras. So in terms of the selfie department over here on the outer display, it works really nice. When it goes to the inside here as well, it's about the same. So it's about the same quality as you would expect to get. And of course, on the rear cameras over here, there is an upgrade compared to last year's V2. Of course, shots that does come out from here look really, really good in terms of good lighting conditions and even in three lighting condition it is still able to give you very very good processors uh, uh, very good images over here which is something really amazing comparing this to like my phones like the magic 6 pro and other brands it does give you very very good sharp images even in night here it works really nice when you're taking portrait shots again they do have the hardcore portrait mode over here this is something really fun to play around with actually to be honest because they give you a little bit more some effects here a little bit of some studio lighting and all this which is really fun to go around and mess around with. So overall, when it comes to the cameras here, I really do like it. And again, one thing that's fun when it comes to the foldable phones is the fact that you can actually use the display here to kind of show you in terms of the viewfinder when you're taking selfies or maybe if you're into a lot of your vlogging or whatsoever, you can just put it up into your face, shoot whatever you want. And of course, you can see multiple kind of views right on the go. It's just something really amazing. And just overall, the camera experience of this is really, really fun as a flagship phone. So this is, of course, I'm going to give a rating of 8 out of 10. So that is it with the Honor Magic V3. And of course, the ultimate question is, should you go out and buy it? To be honest, if you're looking for a very good flagship phone, I think this phone here is really, really good. It is able to support up to five years of software, which is of course really amazing at this price point. If you're looking again for a foldable phone in 2024, I think this phone here feels really nice and comfortable because like I mentioned before, the size of this is what makes it different compared to many other foldable phones. And of course, Honor has made a lot of time, has taken a lot of time and also a lot of resources to make sure that the foldable phone over here will give you the best experience. And of course, the AI they've added over here does fit in really nice with this foldable phone. So as a foldable phone, yes, I would recommend it as a flagship phone. Maybe you want to look at some stuff like the Magic 6 Pro or whatsoever, but this is a really, really complete phone to be honest, really nice and fun to play around with. Of course, these are just my thoughts and my opinions. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think and I'll check it out. And of course, if you guys enjoyed this video, do click the like and smash the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next one.